Brewers. Today we are gonna take a look at how to brew a partial grain extract beer kit from start to finish. These kits are a great way to get into the hobby. You don't need too much equipment and you'll make high quality beer. I made these kind of kits for two or three years before moving on to all grain. In a typical partial grain kit, this is one from our shop, Grain of Glass, but this, your homebrew shop that sells partial grain kits will have a similar ingredient list. You're gonna get a tub of liquid malt extract, or perhaps dry malt extract. This recipe is for an IPA, so it actually comes with liquid malt extract, a dry malt extract, and dextrose. This is not priming sugar for when you bottle, this actually goes into the boil. You're gonna get some grains that are pre-crushed, a grain bag to steep them with. If your kit doesn't come with this, not all of them do, you definitely want something like this, or else it's gonna be a nightmare trying to separate the grain from the water. Of course, some detailed instructions, some hops, and some yeast. Some other equipment you're gonna need is Something to stir the grains. This is just a spoon from my kitchen. A thermometer. When you're steeping the grains, you're gonna to wanna to steep them around 150 Fahrenheit to 160 Fahrenheit, so this will let you know what temperature your water's at. It doesn't have to be this fancy, just any thermometer is fine. And then, obviously, you will need a fermenter, some cleaner. I have Diversol. This is good for plastics and glass. And PBW, this is good for stainless. So clean your fermenters first. And then you'll want a sanitizer. I like Star San, it's a no rinse sanitizer. Very effective and not too expensive. And then a couple other things I use when brewing that are not necessary, but are not expensive. And I think will make your beer a little bit better. Whirl Flock Tablet. This is just a natural way to make your finished beer uh, more clear. I use Camden tablets. If you're using tap water and you don't have a filter to remove the chlorine, a Camden tablet will do that for you. Yeast nutrient, I use the Y yeast brand. Uh, again, not necessary, but this is just some zinc and other minerals that are good for your yeast. And then when I'm brewing on the stove, like we will be doing today, I use Firm Cap. It's an anti-foaming agent. When you're gonna bring the wort up to a boil, it's gonna start to foam like crazy. And if you're not careful, it can like volcano. And if you get that all over your kitchen stove, it's not, not a good day. So Firm Cap prevents that from happening. That's pretty much it. You will need also a 19 liter or five US gallon uh, pot. You know, around that size is fine. It doesn't have to be exactly that. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up 14 liters or that's about 3.7 US gallons of water on our stove. And then we're gonna steep the grains in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have our water in our brew pot. I'm gonna crush up a little bit of a Camden tablet here. Just using two spoons or something like that's fine. Add that into the kettle. Give it a good stir. And then we want to get this water up to about 160 Fahrenheit. So, right now we're at about 138. So we're just gonna have to wait a few minutes for this to heat up and we'll be right back. Okay, we're at about like 157, 158 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna call that uh, close enough. So turn off your burner, super important. Grab your muslin bag or grain bag, your grains. And put them into the bag. And then you wanna stir them up. To make sure that the water gets through all the grains. Just got my spoon in there. And you can already see after 10 seconds, the water changed colors. That's why the temperature isn't so important right now. These are mostly just specialty grains. It's not like we're brewing all grain and we're gonna be getting our fermentables from this. So once you know they're good and stirred, tie a knot so they don't fall out. And then we're gonna let them steep for, you know, 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, at this point, don't worry about the temperature of your water. It's gonna be somewhere between 145 and like 160. That's totally fine. And again, make sure your burner is off at this point. So we're gonna let it steep and then we'll be right back. One quick tip, while your grains are steeping, if your kit includes liquid malt extract like this, fill your kitchen sink up with hot water and just let it sit in there while your grains are steeping. This is kind of like molasses, it's very thick. So if you get it hot, it'll just be easier to pour out uh, when you need to put it into the kettle. So a quick tip for you. All right, so the grains have been steeping for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna take them out. Just lift that up. Let the majority of the uh, water drip out. Or so to just not make a mess all over your kitchen. You don't be getting that all over the place.
Yeah, so that's pretty good. And I have a bowl set up beside here. So as soon as I take this off, we can just rest it in the bowl. There we go. Again, trying to not make a mess. Now we're just gonna turn the burner on and get this to a boil. Once we get to a boil, we'll stir in our liquid malt extract. Okay, so we've reached a boil. So what we're gonna do now is turn off the burner, take it off the element. The element is still hot, even with it off. So I'm just gonna move it over here, and then we're gonna stir in our liquid malt extract. So if I would've left it on this burner, the malt extract would've hit the bottom of the pot and burned pretty much right away because this is so hot still. And you're gonna wanna stir while you're adding this in, so grab a spoon or something like this. Just put it in there and give it a good stir. All right, and then when you have most of it out, I like to just grab one of these silicon spatulas and just scrape the insides. You don't need to get out every last drop, but try to get as much out as you can. I don't know if you can see this, but just does a really good job just scraping the sides and getting out most of the malt extract from the container. Some people rinse this out. Uh, there's just, there's not enough uh, malt extract left in there to really make a difference. Now that all the extra malt extract is in here, I'm just gonna give it another good stir. I'm gonna scrape the bottom of the pot and make sure there's no malt extract stuck on there. So I can see a little bit on the spoon. So I'm just gonna scrape the bottom and give this a really, really good stir. We don't want that to uh, burn to the bottom of the pot when we put it back on the heating element. Pretty sure we got all the malt extract stirred in really well now. So I'm gonna put this back on the burner. And turn it back on. We wanna get this to a boil. Now that we have the malt extract in here, this is our wort. When it gets real close to boiling, a foam is gonna start to come up on the top. You wanna make sure that it doesn't volcano out of your pot. A couple things you can do here is just have a glass of cold water on hand. If you start to see the foam come up, you can just put in a little bit of water. It'll bring it down. And then you can kind of mess with the heat you're adding to your element. You know, take it off high, put it on medium until you get it to a boil, or you can do what I'm gonna do, and once I see that foam come up, I'm gonna take my firm cap, and I'm just gonna add a couple of drops, and you'll see the foam just go away. So once we get to that point, we'll be back, and I'll show you how this works. So we're close to a boil. I can see some of that foam I was talking about start to form. So I'm just gonna take a couple of drops here. One, two, three. That should do it. And you can already see where I put it in. The foam is starting to dissipate. And if I just stir this a little bit. What you can do is try a few kits that you like. Like come down to grain to glass, try the blazing net. It's pretty try much some gone. some smash beers, try some clone brews. There you go. Beers that you like if you can find those recipes. So firm cap, it works wonders and it's cheap. It's like $5 for a vial that'll probably last you 10 years. Well, depending how much you brew. So we're almost at a boil, we just gotta wait a few more minutes, and once we get there, we'll be right back. So we're at a boil, and this recipe has a 60 minute boil with hop additions at 60 minutes. Most recipes will have a 60 minute hop addition, but not all of them. Sometimes it's only at 30 minutes or 10 minutes, depending on the style of beer. This is an American IPA, so we want some bitterness. The longer your hops are boiled for, the more bitterness and the less flavor and aroma. So this is gonna be uh, we're gonna be adding hops at the beginning of the boil at 60 minutes and then towards the end as well as a dry hop to really give it a lot of hop flavor and aroma. So some people use a hop spider when they're adding hops. I like to add them right into the kettle. I find you just get a little bit more out of them that way. Another thing to keep in mind, sometimes when you add your hops to your kettle, it's gonna start to foam up again. 
I don't think we will since I added some firm cap, but just in case when you're adding your hops, just have a glass of cold water on hand. That way if it starts to foam over, you can just pour a little bit in and it'll calm it down. All right, so that went in no problem. So that was uh, an ounce of Centennial, and we're also going to be adding an ounce of Chinook. Same thing, grab my water just in case, but we should be fine. There we go. Stir that in. Again, if it starts to foam up, I got my glass of water on hand. That's looking good. We're gonna start our 60 minute timer. So we got that right there. I like to have two timers just in case. Alexa, start a 60 minute timer. That way, if for some reason one of them fails, I have another one on the go. And the other thing I'm gonna mention is right now my burner's on max. Once you reach a boil, you don't need to do that. You just wanna keep a nice rolling boil. So usually I find if I take it from high to about three quarters, which on my stove is about a six. That'll maintain the boil without it being like super crazy. And that's it, we'll let her boil. Our next hop addition is at 15 minutes. We're gonna add some more Centennial. So once there's 15 minutes left in my timer, now we're gonna add those. And then at the end of the boil, uh, we're adding some more Cascade. That's it, we're just gonna let it boil until we get to the last 15 minutes. Okay, so there's 15 minutes left on our timer. I have a 15 minute hop addition I'm gonna add. Put that in there. I'm gonna grab my cup of cold water again. This recipe also has some dextrose and light DME that needs to get added. Most recipes won't have this, but um, I'm gonna add this in right now. Adding it later in the boil as opposed to right at the beginning will help with keeping the color a little bit lighter. So our dextrose is in. Now I'm gonna put in the DME. This stuff tends to clump quite a bit, so just keep that in mind when you're pouring it in. If it clumps, don't worry about it. It'll dissolve by the time uh, the boil's gonna end. I'm just gonna stir that in. Again, if it starts to foam, we have our cup of cold water on hand. Getting a bit of foam, but nothing too, too bad. All right, that's looking pretty good. And I will be using an immersion chiller. You don't need this. You can also do an ice bath in your kitchen sink uh, once you get to the end of the boil. But I have one on hand, and I do think it's worth the investment. If you've done three or four, uh, you know, partial grain brews and you're liking the hobby, it's worth the let's say $80 or so to get one of these. It'll just cut your brew day down uh, chilling time by quite a bit. This is brand new. If I'd used it before, there's probably still water in here. So once I would add it in, if this had been used before, there's a good chance that boiling water would come out of these tubes. So just keep that in mind when you're adding it and make sure you have these uh, in a sink or something like that, just in case that does happen. So that's it for this part of the boil. We'll be back at the five minute mark where I add some whirl flock and some yeast nutrients. So we got five minutes left in the boil. And again, you don't need to do this, but I like having clear beer with minimal effort. So half a whirl flock tablet. And then I also use Y yeast nutrient blend. They tell you to mix it in with some water first, but I've always had good luck just adding it to the boil. It does tend to clump up. So I just like spread it around. There we go. That's it, so we got five minutes left and then we're gonna start chilling. All right, so at the end of our one hour boil, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heating element and put in my zero minute or flame out hops. Some recipes before you add these will tell you to chill down to about 180 Fahrenheit and let them steep for a bit. And this recipe, we're just pouring them in and then we're gonna start chilling. So I have an immersion chiller, great way to cool your work. If you didn't have this, you could fill your uh, kitchen sink with some cold water and some ice. It takes a while, but it gets the job done. Just gonna make sure all my tubing is good. We don't want this spraying all over the kitchen. It's good, okay, and I'm just gonna turn on my cold water. I'm also gonna take the kettle off of the element that's still hot, just to help it cool a little bit quicker. 
Now keep in mind the water coming out of this immersion chiller is very hot. So you don't want it to spray anywhere, so make sure that your hose is secure and going down the drain and not all over the place. Another thing is I left my spoon in there for the last 10 minutes. Just stirring this while it's chilling is going to save us quite a bit of time. So I'm just going to do this, let the immersion chiller do its job, and we'll come back when uh, it's almost time to add this to, into our fermenter. All right, so we've been chilling for about 10 minutes and we're getting really close to our target temperature here. One quick tip I have is take your water that you're usually gonna top up with in the fermenter and just freeze it in Ziploc bags. So I personally use store-bought RO water. You're putting it into a food grade bag. There's no issues with contamination. I wouldn't buy like, you know how they have bags of pre-made ice that you chuck in your cooler. I wouldn't use that, but this should be totally clean. So gonna get some of the liquid out here. Gonna have to break this bag open. And of course, clean your hands all the time. I just clean and sanitize my hands. Oh, get that in there. And that'll help us chill down even quicker. So just a quick tip, not a lot of people think about doing that and uh, it does save quite a bit of time. So it should be maybe five more minutes and we can transfer this into the fermenter. So we have our wort chilled. We're ready to put it into the fermenter. This is probably gonna make a bit of a mess, so grab a towel, put it down on the ground. I'm using a Fermonster. I love these things. Uh, they're relatively cheap, 40-ish bucks. Nice and big, easy to clean. You can put a spigot on them. I might as well mention, make sure that the spigot is in the off position before you add your wort if you have a spigot on your fermenter. This has obviously been thoroughly cleaned and sanitized. Super important. We're gonna pour this in and try not to make a mess. And I don't worry too much about trying to keep any trube out or anything like that. I mostly put everything from the kettle in, except for the last little bit. But honestly, if you transfer that in as well, it wouldn't matter. Okay, so we're at about 12 liters or so. Uh, this recipe, we're gonna top it up to 21. So I'm gonna go grab some water and be right back. So I got my jug of clean water, and we're just gonna top it up to 21 liters. Most partial grain extract kits are going to be either 19 or 21 liters. Just consult the instructions to see what you should be topping it up to. I should have just enough water in here. Oh, just a bit more. Perfect. I have a volume marking here on the back. Anyway, we're where we need to be. And next, you're gonna wanna mix this really well. So, a uh, sanitized spoon or something like that. I'm gonna go grab something else. That works a little bit better. Give me a sec. If you make wine, you probably already have a wine degasser. If you make wine and don't own one of these, spend the 20 bucks, trust me, it's worth it. So, this will help us mix this up really well. A lot of times, we'll get phone calls at the shop asking why the gravity reading of their partial grain kit is either way too high or way too low. It's because it's not mixed well enough. So make sure this is, the one I have is metal, even if it was plastic, you wanna make sure you're not hitting the sides of your fermenter with it. So just keep it steady in the middle. You don't need the drill going full bore here. You can also aerate a little bit at the same time. Look at that. All right, so I'd call that pretty well mixed. Now, if I had a bit more time, I'd wait for the foam to subside and just grab my hydrometer and drop it right into here. Obviously, if you have a carboy, that wouldn't work. Um, but if you had a pail or something like this, you could. Just to save time, I'm gonna set this aside and we'll fill up a hydrometer test jar instead. That should 
be enough. So I'm just going to make sure this isn't going to spill everywhere here. No, we should be good. A little bit of bubbles here. Just get them out of the way. I want to spin that slightly. And we're sitting at right about, right about 1060, which let me check the instructions here. And yeah, it says 1060 to 1065. So we're looking really good. So at this point, I'm gonna put the fermenter back down. We can pitch our yeast. Right now, the temperature of our wort is right around 19 Celsius. For most beer styles, you're gonna want it around that range, you know, 17 to 20. Sanitize yeast pack, sanitize scissors. And I do not rehydrate my yeast. Uh, Fermentus doesn't say you need to anymore. And uh, I find it's just a hassle. So now I just sprinkle it on. Try to go evenly. All right, put on our lid and airlock. And that's it. You made the wort, the yeast is gonna make the beer. So you're gonna wanna keep this somewhere relatively cool. I keep mine in the basement if you don't have a firm chamber. Somewhere where the room temperature is under 20 Celsius, or I believe that's 68 Fahrenheit. If you're in a carboy or something like that, you'll wanna wrap it with like a t-shirt or what have a towel, something like that. These have a UV coating, so you're fine, but Either way, you should keep this out of direct sunlight. So you wanna let your beer sit and ferment for around two weeks. It'll vary by recipe, but most beers will be done in the two to three week period. At that point, you'll be ready to either bottle or keg your beer. You can check our channel for videos on how to keg your beer if you've never done it before. Or stay tuned, we have an upcoming how to bottle your beer video that should be available in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe to see future content like this. Cheers and see you on the next video.